Well, the average retirement age continues to rise, and with people staying in the workforce longer, there's a greater need for professionals to constantly reinvent themselves. Nearly two-thirds of working adults admit they could be more entrepreneurial in their careers. Ruth Valoria, Executive Dean of University of Phoenix School of Business, joins us now with tips on how to create a more entrepreneurial work environment. Ruth, thank you so much for joining me this morning. Good morning. Okay, well, I have to start with the question. I've never heard of intrapreneurial, so, and it's obviously hard to say. So what is the difference between an <laughs> entrepreneur and an intrapreneur? So I think a lot of people are familiar with entrepreneurs, the Mark Zuckerbergs of the world who go off and start their own enterprise, Facebook and, and all the great new high-tech companies. But an entrepreneur does those same things, yet within the boundaries of their current organization. So they leverage the, the resources, the assets, the capital of their current organization. So for example, did you know that the Frappuccino is actually the product of a Starbucks intrapreneur? You know, a lady who found a market opportunity, sold the idea, and created a very large business for Starbucks. Oh wow, well look at that. That's a great example of an intrapreneur. So I'm wondering, when is the good time to become one? Well, right now, let me tell you, because as a leader in a business school, I know from talking to CEOs and business leaders that innovation is on the top three agenda for CEOs today. So that person in the organization that can come forward with the creative idea and the gumption to get it done is very, very valued and appreciated right now. Lots of competition domestically and internationally. So the CEO needs your growth ideas. So this is a great time to bring them forward. Well, exactly. So I know that sounds like something a lot of us want to do, step up, be that entrepreneur. But how do we know if we're going to be good at it? I mean, how do we know if this is really the right time? Yeah. So you know, I'd say there's three key skills that you want to be comfortable with here. Number one, creativity. Can you, you know, get close enough to customers to really know what that new product or service idea is that's needed? Number two, do you have the pitching and sales skills to take your business plan and put it in front of a senior executive and get their sponsorship? And then number three, you know, do you have the perseverance and determination that it's going to take to get the idea over the finish line? Big organization might have a little bit more process, right? The budget cycle, the approvals, the few extra hurdles. But if you can get through those hurdles, the fact that the organization already has the capital and the resources on hand may mean you can get to market a lot faster. Well, and I know, you know, one of the things of being an entrepreneur would be growing the skills, you know, um, maybe expanding our careers while staying in our company that we're currently in. So what are some of the ways that we can do that? Well, certainly, maybe some formal education might help, right? If you did an inventory of your skills, do you have the sales, the business plan basics? There's lots of ways to get those. Many universities have such opportunities. Of course, there's the formal degrees, bachelor's and master's in business programs. But in addition to that, lots of schools offering professional development, so small, bite-sized pieces of education, maybe in project management or leadership. We have plenty of those at University of Phoenix and easy to take those online so it won't interrupt your daily schedule in the office. So lots of great education pathways. And then if you have some free time on your weekends, maybe in the evenings, is there a local nonprofit in your community that might need help with a business plan? You could get some real great hands-on learning and that will create some nice stories, of course, to tell when you're in the CEO's office about how they should trust you with the leadership of their innovation. So those are two great ways to get started. Well, Ruth, this has been really great. I think the new year is the perfect time to kind of step up, grow our skills, you know, climb up that ladder in our own company. And I want to thank you so much for joining us. Where can we go for more information? I would go right to phoenix.edu. Lots of great info there about business courses and, of course, our entrepreneurship survey and what it means to be an entrepreneur. Hope that inspires a lot of people to get started. I'm sure it will. Ruth, thank you again for speaking to us this morning. Thanks so much and best to you for 2016. Same to you. Now stay where you are. The Morning Blend will be right back.